Welcome back to the Hill Update. I'm your host, Dean Allison, Member of Parliament for Niagara West. Joining me on the show today is Karen Vecchio. Karen was first elected as the Member for Parliament for Elgin, Middlesex, London in 2015. She has served as the Shadow Minister for Women and Gender Equality and Youth. She's been the Deputy House Leader for the Official Opposition, Shadow Minister for Women and Gender Equality, Chair of the Standing Committee on the Status of Women, Shadow Minister for Families, Children and Social Development, and part of the all-party parliamentary group to end modern slavery and human trafficking. Prior to entering elected politics, Karen owned and operated a small business in London. Karen was raised on a turkey and a hog, hog farm in Sparta, Ontario. Welcome, Karen. I, I never knew Hi. that about you. I, it, I had no it idea. It was that, that hog raised... farm thing that threw you right off, wasn't it? <laughs> I, I, I had no idea. So I always say that anyone that grew up on a farm knows the value of hard work. So. Yeah, absolutely. I grew up on a livestock farm, so that means 365 days of manual labor. And that's gonna, what I know. I was going to say, no days off uh, for farmers whatsoever, right? So, No doubt. Well, lots going on in the house this week. So I'm going to start with a video of uh, just Pierre talking about uh, a few things, and then we'd love to get your, your feedback on it. So sure. let's roll the video. Mr. Speaker, there is no time to waste. The B.C. government asked him to reverse his, le his legalization of crack, heroin, and other hard drugs in public places on Friday. Every day, six British Columbians die of overdoses under this policy, and many more die as a result of drug-induced crimes. So there are, is no time for bureaucratic and political considerations. Will he announce now that his experiment with legalizing hard drugs in BC is over. Yes or no? Yeah. All right, Karen. So, I, what exactly is going on in BC? I mean, Premier Evie's been asking the federal government to reverse a role. Would you just give people a bit of the background of what what's been happening in BC? You know, so for many years, they, we've known that in scene addictions, I know when I first became a member of parliament, we were working with a lady from Surrey White Rock, Diane, and she, it was the first time I heard about fentanyl. And that was in 2015 when she was talking about what they were seeing in BC. And they've tried to stay in, in, in front of what we're seeing in this true epidemic when it comes to the use of drugs. And, and so in where they were trying to help, the police were trying to help those who were, you know, who have these addictions and many of them are homeless as well. The BC government, with the huge support from this federal government, allowed for small possessions to become legalized. And with that, it just opened up a can of worms. You know, I think the police were already trying to do their best, recognizing that people who have addictions do have these things on them. But instead of, of just saying, hey, let's make this free for all, um, they should have been really focusing on how can we take that individual and then help put them on a, a better path. And instead, what we have seen, instead of trying to help people, we've seen a way of saying, continue to use, continue to use. And at the end of the path, you know, when it comes to drug use, there is only one way and it's down. And we unfortunately know that. If we are not there supporting addicts, trying to put them on a better path, the only place that they'll end up is in a grave. And so this BC policy has seen six people dead per day. The uh, Toronto City Hall has talked about bringing it to our town. No way. We need to fight against this. Uh, we hear of people on, you know, in, in playgrounds, you know, families take their children to playgrounds and they're having to check underneath all of the little wood chips to make sure that there's not news, uh, used needles. This is just part of the reality that's being created. And then we know that with, with drugs, there is a lot of crime. There is a lot of, of sexual harassment, human trafficking, all of these things that all could be affiliated. And so we have just created this ecosystem for uh, bad social policy. So I, mean, I guess that so you sort of touched on it. I guess it's important the BC decision what the federal government does because you just mentioned Toronto is actually trying to look at these same policies. So, you know, I, I guess that would be pretty difficult when we look at what's going on here in Ontario, what that could mean for the greater, not just Toronto, but, you know, those cities surrounding Toronto. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we, we talk about boundaries. The boundaries just don't stop. The GATA, Toronto, it's a big mass and there's millions of people that we need to look at. But we have seen this failed policy out in BC. So I do not know why we allow it to be adopted for the city of Toronto. Um, what we have seen is just this huge increase. Instead of working and having drug policies that work for addicts and families, they're going on and just 
perpetuating, continuing this cycle of drug use and, and addictions. And, you know, as, as a mother, as a person who has worked very, very closely with addictions, especially in my work as in human trafficking and in status women, there is such a strong correlation between all of these things. So uh, until this government um, starts making sense with their policies, we're going to continue to see people die. And so we need this policy, especially at the, for BC, to be removed immediately. As it's been said, it's just a signature of the pen. Okay, let's uh, go to break and then we'll come back and finish that thought.